behind you. I'm behind you. I am right behind you. <laughs> What's up, friends? Welcome back to Nightmare Games. Today, I, I was watching a video and uh, top 10 cursed objects by uh, most amazing top 10 YouTube. Check it out. I'll link it all the original below, obviously, as always. But I got through the first <laughs> the first cursed object and I thought I need to share my thoughts on this because this this is ridiculous. Uh, how these objects I'm going to title change uh, top 10 objects that were thrown into a fire immediately. Uh, upon discovering that they were cursed. That's really what they, they I would name it. Clearly, some of these objects have been around. They're still around. Let's get into the video. Comment, drop some comments what you think. I, I, I'm, I'm floored by the fact that any of these objects still exist. But uh, this is the world we live in, and yet here we are, and we wonder why terrible things happen. And this, this is why. We don't seize the opportunity to destroy... I don't even know how to describe them. To destroy these things that clearly... Uh, should no longer exist. So let's let's get into it. Today we have the Dybbuk box. The box, which was originally just a plain old wine box, is said to have... I'm going to have to stop. It's a very good video. It's well done. But this uh, girl here, it, uh, she does a lot of speaking throughout and narrating. So uh, in order to get my comments and my thoughts clearly across, I'll have to pause as we go along here been possessed by a Dybbuk, which in Jewish mythology is a malicious demon that takes over the bodies of living people and uses them for evil. The box began to gain attention in 2001 when it was being auctioned off on eBay. The seller explained that he had bought it at an estate sale of a woman who had survived. Like who's buying the, like it's on eBay, who's buying this box? Like it's, <laughs> I don't understand. The Holocaust. When he first opened the box, he found two 1920s pennies, a lock of blonde hair bound with a cord, a lock of black hair bound with a cord, a small statue engraved with the Hebrew word Shalom, a small golden wine goblet, one dried rosebud, and a single candle holder with four octopus shaped legs. But refund. Where's my refund, please? Is is where he, this guy should have went with Since that. he bought the box, he reported that strange things began happening, such as really horrific nightmares for him and anyone who had stayed around or touched the box. And when he gave the box to his mother as a birthday gift... I'm sorry. <laughs> he gave the box to his mother as a birthday gift. Oh my god. That's like attempt murder. That's the... the I don't understand why. Here you go, mom. She suffered a stroke the same day. The box ended up in the hands of Zach Bagan, who is a paranormal investigator, and it now resides in his haunted museum. The box also gained even more attention in 2018 when Post Malone touched it and has apparently been dealing with the repercussions of that ever since. In Why would you touch it? I don't understand. Like, hey guys, this is a super haunted box. Uh, it gives people strokes and nightmares. But uh, go ahead. If you want to just, if you want to graze it, go ahead. In our number eight Skip number nine. It was a uh, mummified man. Not really that interesting, to be honest, but uh, let's continue on with this. But today we have the Hope Diamond. This gorgeous, unusually large diamond is a blue color and worth an insane $250 million. That'll kill somebody. In the off chance you have that. Somebody would get killed for that. I mean, cursed or not. Yeah. Kind of money laying around, I still wouldn't recommend purchasing it because it is said to be cursed. The curse dates back to the 17th century and that's it is just that's just something the guy that owns it made up probably. Don't it's cursed. Don't don't take my diamond. Said that whoever wears the diamond will have great misfortune and misery. Legend goes that the diamond was stolen from the eye of a sculpted See? statue stolen. of the Hindu goddess Sita, and since then it has been cursing whoever owns or possesses the 115 carat diamond. Stories of the horrible fates of those who have since owned the diamond include people taking their own lives, people being killed intentionally by others, and some yeah. accounts even well, claim that the owner was quote torn to pieces well, that's which sounds unfortunate. like one of the worst fates out there there have since been replicas made of the stone and i think just to be as safe as possible i'll probably stay away from those just in case in our number seven spot today we have robert the doll and they, they look at this doll <laughs> whether this doll is cursed or not uh it's cursed look at it Bell gets a lot of attention for being a haunted doll, but Robert is just as terrifying. Robert the doll was a childhood birthday gift from- The, the doll wasn't cursed. A curse morphed itself into the shape of a doll. Clearly, look at this thing. That's disturbing. 
So disturbing. A grandfather to his grandson, who was also named Robert, but more often went by Gene. The story claims that while growing up with Robert, Gene would often be heard by his parents in his bedrooms having conversations with himself in two entirely different voices. His parents would sometimes be woken up in the middle of the night possessed. to the sound of Gene screaming, only to find him oh. completely frightened Scary in story. bed with overturned furniture around him. Gene would then blame Robert for all of... Again, this doll still exists. It's still... <clears throat> it's still physically uh, in this in this world. It the strange happenings, and at the time, no one really believed him. Gene kept Robert into adulthood, and it became what people would describe as an unhealthy relationship. He kept Apparently, him. Gene took Robert everywhere with him and spoke as if he was a living entity rather than a doll. Okay, this story is already not great, but it gets worse. Gene oh, lived good. in a house good, as good. an adult that was called the artist's house. Robert would be left in the upstairs window where children in the area reported seeing the doll disappear and reappear, and they all choked. Why would someone do that to the neighborhood kids? Why are you, Why would you put the doll in the window? Uh, for the kids to stare at, that's just cruel. Was ...to just stay clear of the house. Agreed. After Jean passed stay away clear in 1974, house. a woman named Myrtle purchased the house and apparently Robert as well. Visitors of the house could swear that they could hear footsteps and giggling coming from the attic where Robert was, and some even claimed to see the doll's expression changed if someone spoke poorly. I'm staring at it too long. Oh my god. The, the condition of the house, if I were to buy the house, would be, one, I wouldn't buy the house. I would put the doll in the house, burn the whole thing down. But uh, if I were to buy the house, one of the conditions obviously would be you take the doll with you. That's, that's condition number one. Of Jean. Myrtle reported Robert moving around the house on his own. And after 20 years, she decided she 20 had years? And don't this woman is the patron saint of patience. It took her 20 years to realize that uh, this was a bad idea. The patients or... Mm, Donated him to a museum. Robert still lives in the museum where he is safely locked up, but it is said that he still likes to place a little curse on those who take his photo without permission. The walls of the museum near Robert's glass case are riddled with notes from previous visitors and naysayers who are begging Robert for his forgiveness and asking him to remove any curse he has placed on them. In our number six yeah. today, we have the Atlantis ring. The Atlantis ring was originally made of clay and it was found in 1860 in the Valley of the Kings in a tomb of an Egyptian high Priest. Don't fuck it with the tombs. On to Don't mess Carter, with the tombs. Who kept it until he passed away in 1939. The ring was believed to be at least 5,000 years old, and it had geometric symbols carved into it that were unlike anything known in Egypt. Here's where the story gets a little weird, though. Hit me with Howard it. is one of the people who discovered King Tut's tomb, and he would later tell people he was wearing a talisman when the tomb was opened, also known as the Atlantis Ring. He claimed that the ring gave him protection, and that just might be true because he is the only only member of the team who didn't die a mysterious death after the opening of the tomb. Even yeah. those who visited shortly after the opening of the tomb were subject to this curse with a total of 18 victims in the end. Howard said that the ring is what protected him against whatever evil forces were at play. So I guess maybe the Atlantis ring is more like an anti-curse Yeah, that's not object. a curse. That's I a good know. thing. But what I do know Send is it. that it is all quite curious. There are now replicas that are sold, but I'm not sure if any hold the power of the real deal. In our number five spot today, we have Thomas Busby's chair. Thomas was a man who lived in Thirsk, North Yorkshire, and wasn't okay. known as a very nice man, but he really loved his chair. I guess we all gotta have something. In 1702, he found his father-in-law sitting in it, and it sparked an argument between the two. The father-in-law threatened to take his daughter back, which, like, should have never been a threat considering she's a grown woman, but I guess that's what went on uh, in these things happen. That's fine. Anyway, that's when Busby kicked him out of the house. After this, Busby ended up going over to the father-in-law's house and actually killed him with a hammer and then hid his body in the woods. Wow. Of course, the body ended up being found, and this led to Busby getting convicted and sentenced to death. It is said that on his ride to the execution, he asked to stop by his favorite pub for a beer, and this request was fulfilled. Apparently, as he finished his drink, he said, May sudden death come to anyone who dares sit in my chair. I Burn the chair. See, right when he said that, first of all, you let him stop at a pub to have a beer before he, the execution. Things were different. Uh, and, and then he placed a curse on the chair. The fact that the chair is still there, uh, see, it boggles my mind. I really don't know what it is with this guy in his chair, but while it currently resides in the Thirsk Museum, it has been recorded that many terrible fates have been met by terrible. the people who have sat in the chair. In 1972, it was decided to hang the chair from the ceiling so that no one could ever sit. I'll take that a step further. 
Destroy the chair. Why even hang it up? Just destroy it. Problem solved. In it again, which is probably for the best. So now, Not knowing enough. this story, I want you to let me know in the comments if you had the chance, would you sit in the chair? I wouldn't. <laughs> In our number Stupid four question. Today, Annabelle the Stupid doll. question. When I saw the 2014 Another Annabelle movie, doll. I had no idea it was actually based on a real life doll. But since starting my job here at Most Amazing Top Ten, Ooh, I the know one that all about <laughs> That's the real from the movie. story. This doll now resides inside of the Warren's Occult Museum, where it absolutely belongs. Look at this but thing. This story Is that it? Starts off with a college student named Donna who received the doll as a gift from her mother, who had purchased it from an antique store. You probably Donna got from. He probably got the doll from the guy who bought the divot box and gave it to his mother. And this is probably the girl. That's his mother. The mother giving it to, yeah, that's probably, this is all, this is all connected. Roommates started to notice some pretty creepy things happening and swore that the doll was moving. They said it would appear in different places and positions throughout their apartment before one things time. began to escalate. It would move Donna one began time to find in my house. That said help in her apartment and one night found the doll in a different position and covered in some sort of red substance. The girls then decided to contact a medium who solidified all of their beliefs and told them that the doll had been possessed by the spirit of someone who was killed in their apartment building for some reason the girls didn't immediately terrible. get rid of the doll and the story goes that their friend lou who was at the girl's apartment heard strange noises one night and went to investigate and he was then attacked and killed by annabelle the girls finally well, that's contacted a little, a that's a little told them that the doll was possessed by a demon straight from hell and then put them in contact with ed and lorraine warren they tried to do an exorcism on the doll but it apparently failed and now it is kept in a glass box in the but you know what is better than exorcism I'm gonna go back to this the giant fire. That would that would do it, I think. Museum where it hopefully cannot and will never do any more damage. In our number three spot today, we have the Uluru Rock. The Uluru Rock is a large sandstone formation that is located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is sometimes mm, known as Ayers Rock, but regardless of what it is called, this area is sacred for the people indigenous to this place. This is part of the reason that those who visit the Don't rock mess with are the asked sacred. not to take anything from the site. Despite this, people of course still choose to smuggle pieces of the rock out of the area and home with them. That's well, their problem. Other than the bad karma and just in general feeling like a bad person for doing the one thing you're asked not to do, as it turns out, this rock may hold a more sinister secret. Those who have stolen rocks from the Uluru have experienced things like extremely bad luck, severe illness, and even sometimes the death of those they love. The curse these rocks hold is seemingly so bad that it is very common for the company that runs the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology that contain the stolen rocks. Yeah, that's, uh, you, that's your problem. You did that. You did it to yourself. That's... I. Uh, there's no sympathy there. Don't steal don't steal sacred bits of rock. There's come so often at least one a day is expected. Maybe this is a weird coincidence, but it just seems to be happening a little too often for that to be the explanation. In our number two spot today, we have the Bizano vase. The Bizano vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the wedding night, however, the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last Ooh. breath, she vowed to have her revenge oh. and at this point it chills. became unclear whether the vase was already cursed or perhaps if this may be what oh my caused God. the Don't curse in the first place oh, as time went on the vase oh, was handed from looking. person to person within her family and with each new owner came a mysterious death because of this the Smash family oh. decided to hide the vase away in some sort of secret location and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. Why not the break it? The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever it's found the vase did not listen, and instead, they sold it once again. The first buyer, eBay. who is said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was the 37-year-old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with this vase in his possession, and at this point, you get where this is going. We don't know exactly where the vase ended up, but Good. I'm hoping it's somewhere deep underground. Or destroyed. Or maybe in space. Or maybe in the Mariana Trench. Just anywhere far away from all of us. In our number one spot today, we have the goddess of death. 
The this goddess statue of is sometimes death. also known as the woman from Lem. This artifact made out of limestone was created sometime around 3,500 BC and it was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years it has belonged to many different families who have all been ruined and dismantled by death. After Why? the first six years of ownership, all Why? seven members of the first family died. Put it back. It then moved on to a second owner and after four years death began to come to him death and his family. Became. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed but once the third family got a hold of it, several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum, where it thankfully Good. still resides. See? However, the, the third museum family, curator smart. who handled the item was mysteriously killed a few days after. Oh my God. It is clear whatever curse this statue holds, it is strong and frightening. So there you have it. I want to share that with you. A couple of my comments. Uh, clearly, I revert always back to uh, the fire, the big giant fire that these things all should have been thrown into as they were discovered to be dangerous and or cursed. But uh, yet here we are. They sit in museums. People touch them. They look at them. They take pictures. And bad things continue to happen. I don't understand. Or if people are just, you know, the, you, the cavemen, they, they invented fires for three reasons. One, for heat and, and for heat and light. Two, to cook their food. And three, to throw cursed objects uh, into them to destroy them forever. I'm sure that's the reason fire was invented. So they should just carry on that tradition. And all these items should uh, no longer be existent in existence. But uh, yeah, here we are. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let's get back to playing some games. So subscribe, YouTube, like all that stuff. And we'll catch you on the next one.